All right, so today we're gonna to show you how to take your coffee mugs out of the cabinet and put them on your wall in a kind of fashionable way. All right, stick around and see what we do. items that most of you probably have laying around your house. If you don't have all these items, don't worry, you can probably improvise with something else or maybe like knocking on the drywall to find a stud. Uh, but anyway, we will need a drill gun of some sort, corded, battery powered, doesn't matter. Even a, even a Phillips screwdriver would do. Um, I have a stud finder. Very easy to find studs in the wall so you can anchor your, your board on securely. Um, Phillips, Phillips driver, and I'm using some drywall screws. These are inch and a half. Um, this is what's going to anchor the, the furring strip here onto the wall. And this is a 764, I think it's 764, 764 drill bit. So the idea here is to get a drill bit that's just a little bit smaller than the screw, just so we don't split the wood. Uh, tape measure. And you'll need, of course, your hooks to put the coffee cups on and a level to make sure things aren't crooked and finally your board which i painted with just ultra white latex interior paint satin sheen so what's the board so the board specifically it's just um it's just like a common board pine um it's one half by two inches by three feet yeah. so you got one half two inches three feet long so there's the there's the sticker if you want to see that All right, so earlier this year, it wasn't filmed, but I went ahead and made three of them. But clearly we need more space for coffee mugs because the two of us, this just isn't enough. Um, so Rosalind asked me to make another one. So anyway, so these are approximately five and three quarters inches apart from bottom to top. And that comfortably fits a pretty chunky campfire mug. So space them out however you want. If you want to go a little bit further, a little bit more narrow, whatever you want to do is fine. So as I said, we'll go about five and three quarter inches apart. Now I already know where my studs are, and that's where I put my screws here. But, um, so I'll go ahead and do my five and three quarters. And we're just gonna draw a line. Just put a little mark on the wall with my pretty pink pencil here. Oh, you'll also need a pencil for this project. I didn't mention that earlier. All right, so since I've already got these three up, what I'm doing here is just measuring and seeing where I put the screws to go into the studs, and I'm at five and a half and 23, and I realize that is not 16 on center, um, but I think I'm on one edge of the stud or another. Um, so not dead center of the stud, but I'm just gonna go ahead and mimic this to make it match uh, these other three. So we got five and a half and 23. So we'll come down here, lay your tape out across your, your board here, and we said five and a half, a little mark and a 23. Now yours will be different, so don't expect yours to be at five and a half and 23. Just, My. Wherever, just wherever you find your studs, based on where you want your board on the wall, go ahead and get your marks for where your studs are. So just to reiterate, what we're doing is the two marks you put here correspond to where the studs are on the wall based on where you want this. So for instance, if I wanted it up here, I'll take my stud finder, figure out where my studs are, and then if I want it off center, then I'll just figure out where my studs are, put a mark, and put a mark, and that's where you're going to drill your holes. All right, next I'm taking my 764 drill bit and put it into the chuck of your drill. And what we're doing, those marks you made earlier to correspond where your studs are, we're just going to drill through the board, and I'm inside and don't want to damage the countertop, so I put just a little cardboard box underneath, just so I don't puncture the Okay, so now that we've got our holes drilled to go where our studs are, now it's time to put the little coffee hooks in, or the cup hooks. So we've got enough to put seven hooks on this board at six inches apart. So the first one and the last one, you'll have to be, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch or so in from the end of the wood so you don't, so you don't split the wood. All right, so what I like to do is just lay the tape out 
across the board, lock it in place so it doesn't move. And every six inches, what we're gonna do is just kinda eyeball the center of the board from top to bottom. So, six inches, and then at one foot, and then at 18, and then at two feet. All right, so this board is, it reads on the sticker two inches wide, but it's actually an inch and a half. That's how dimensional lumber is measured. So we'll have our first six inch mark. So what's one half of one and a half is three quarters of an inch. So we'll just come at three quarters of an inch and we'll just put a line, just a horizontal line there. And that'll be where we'll actually drill the hole for the, for the cup hook. And you'll repeat that on, on down the, the board. All right, so now we'll take our cup hook and the tip of it's pretty sharp. It's kind of, it's kind of like a self-tapping screw. And what you're going to do is on your little mark, get set, go. You'll just take your cup hook, press down, and eventually it'll bite. And straight as you can, and just screw it on in. All right, so I did two by hand, and to be honest with you, my hands are starting to hurt a little bit. Um, so what we can do is take a really small drill bit. In this case, it's a 564th. Put that in your drill. You definitely want to make sure it's a lot smaller than your, um, than your cup hook. What we're going to do is don't go all the way through the wood, just maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch in. And we'll do that to all of them, the rest of them. And this will be just enough to help get the cup hook started. transition to the Phillips driver in your screw gun and we're just going to get these screws started so just put them in about an eighth of an inch or so into your holes and what you can do um, I don't have one but if you have a countersink bit that would be ideal to use here that way you can put the head of the screw below the surface of the wood and then you can putty it over and then you don't even see it. But I don't have that, so I'm just using one half. All right, so now we're gonna take, I kind of already cheated and already marked where everything is where I want it. But get you a level, make sure everything is nice and nice and squared up, nice and straight. And since you've already put your, your screws in, it's really a two-man job, but since my partner is helping me hold the camera, um, I'll just, Oh my God. Yeah. Incredibly tall. <laughs> All right, so before you put your coffee mugs on here, you might notice um, that the hooks aren't, aren't open enough. So what you can do, just take you, take you a pair of pliers, on the tip of the hook and we'll just ever so slightly bend it out and bend it out as far as you need to depending on the handle on your coffee mugs. Mugs. So it's nice to have the hooks open up a little bit. So here is the finished product. So now we have an extra row, but hopefully you'll at least have one, two, three, or four rows. Um, maybe even more, I don't know. Do whatever you want. Um, but all we have left to do is, like I said, we need to put a little bit of paint on the screws because I don't have a countersink bit. So I'm unable to countersink them. I'm sure there's other ways I could figure out how to do that. But this works for us. And now we have plenty of space for all of Rosalind Love mugs.
and a few other little extra ones we've accumulated along the way. So thank you for watching and like and subscribe somewhere down there. Um, that'd be great. All right, bye.